All right, guys, welcome to this week's edition of No Label Live. I'm your host, Nathan, a.k.a. The Muscle Motivator. And if this is the first time you are watching this show or listening, No Label Live is all about this right here. So I don't know what labels you were given in the past. I don't know what labels you currently are wearing but I know you can be the creator of your own future, and that is up to you. This week, I have a guest, and this guest, the first time I saw him was scrolling through my Facebook feed, and I saw this Vice video, and I was like, huh, that guy, I think I relate a lot to that young man. Um, and his journey in fitness. And this, this guy has the potential to be the first pro wheelchair bodybuilder in Canada in this generation. So how exciting is that? And this young man is Bray Hoffman. So Bray, thanks so much for joining us today. And why don't we dive in by telling the uh, people on the show a little bit about yourself. Oh, yes, my pleasure. Um, so I was born with quad CP. I was diagnosed when I was one. Honestly, I don't know a lot about it because I haven't done a lot of research. And I, and then I got involved with sports like wheelchair basketball when I was around four years old. I was on this, uh, uh, organization called SWAT. We did all kinds of things from wheelchair basketball to curling to karate to uh, sledge hockey, just all kinds of things. So I've been really involved in sports my whole life. But after I was about 12 years old, I kind of left the whole uh, wheelchair basketball scene. And then I stumbled upon a YouTube video of the first IFBB pro wheelchair bodybuilding show in Houston and I just saw all of the pros up on stage and I saw wow that's something I want to do right so that, that's how I fell in love with the sport and I've been doing it for eight years since then so so and, uh, who was the who was the first pro that really like when you saw that that turned you on to that's the guy I want to look like it was uh, it was Nick Scott. So now he doesn't compete anymore, but he promotes and he runs all the and uh, does all the wheelchair shows for the wheelchair division to get it out there. And so, as you started your journey, what kind of led you to be like, other than seeing the show? to get in the gym and say, oh yeah, this, this is for me? Um, really? So I, my dad actually helped me out getting in the gym. Uh, he started calling around and he called uh, the Good Life in Kitchener. Um, and they helped me out with a free membership. So, and then I got into the gym. It actually started because I was uncomfortable with the way I looked. I thought I looked, uh, fat now that's crazy right because i'm 12 but i'm sitting down all day so that's a lot that's all i saw so i was uncomfortable uncomfortable with myself so that's how that started and then three to four months in i just say my dad took me about four to five days a week we worked out together and that's how i just really got hooked and then seeing everybody seeing all the big guys in the gym is also how i got hooked and just wanting to be up to their par and uh, on their level, right? Yeah. Um, so I can totally relate to the insecurity of the way that um, you look, right? Because that's something that happened in, in my journey as well. And I think for majority of people who end up in the gym and, and they stick it out, that that's one of the common threads that you see across the board. There's some insecurity there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, would you say that 
now what started as an insecurity is has built into a major area of confidence for you oh uh, yeah um uh, because whenever there's something going on in my life i resort to the gym and the the way i want to look and what i want to do with my life so there's definitely some major confidence in just going in the gym alone uh and because sometimes it's not focusing on goals sometimes you have to realize why you start because everybody gets nobody's motivated uh 24 7 right so sometimes you just have to re realize where you started and then just go from there or just really um re-motivate yourself and rebuild that confidence but yeah there's definitely a ton of confidence i've gained over the years from just being in the gym and not only that i get I get people coming up to me all the time in my gym and the other gyms that I go to about how, how much I inspire them and how much I com how much confidence I give them just to go to the gym because I'm in the situation that I'm in. So that for me is a big motivation booster just to keep myself going. Yeah, absolutely. I can relate to that a hundred percent. Um, so I saw on, I think it was your Instagram. I saw you were benching and I think you were hitting 225, right? Yeah, that was back in March. That was actually the first time I hit it. It went all right. Uh, that was actually the second attempt that I filmed. And then it went all right. I got it for one and then progressively I got it for two or three and then I fell off track for a while. And then I just actually hit it right before the new year, took some time off, enjoyed the holidays, came back to the gym, and I guess all the extra food helped, and I was able to uh, get back up to that weight just right before the new year, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. So when, when I was watching that, I was thinking um, a way that something you could talk about that would support the listeners is um, – what are things that you do or, or ways that you adapt to certain exercises if it's not um, something that you do the same way as a non-disabled uh, bodybuilder? Well, anything I can pretty much do every exercise that I can, except for squats, obviously, but, you know. Um, so. For example, like I, I get most people to help me in the gym. Most people will help me in the gym, but when somebody's not around and I need to do a back exercise, say lat pull down or something, uh, so what I'll do is I'll hook it up to the uh, cable instead of the actual machine because the machine's a little higher, right, and I can't get up to reach it. So I'll hook it up to the cable and pull my chair right up to uh, the cable and just start doing them that way because I still remain in the chair. Yeah. Um, and as for like dumb, any pressing movement like bench press or dumbbell movements, I usually have to, what, what I need to get is a lifting belt so I can actually lock myself in. But right now I don't have one of those. So I'm just uh, kind of, improvising and using my chair so what i do is i pull my chair right up and i put my legs underneath my chair so mm -hmm. and then i put a weight on top of my chair so it's a little more stable because as soon as i lose that traction underneath my legs the whole movement's gone because you got no <laughs> stability right yeah so that's just how i've adapted and uh i and then when my parents stopped going to the gym with me um, because eventually you want to branch out on your own. So I just had to learn how to get on and off machines efficiently because my legs are obviously a little tighter than the average person. So trying to, trying to uh, maneuver onto certain machines, it's kind of still a struggle to, to get one leg over and then one leg gets stuck. You're sitting there for two to three minutes trying to figure it out. Yeah. But you know, I've been doing it long enough where you just kind of figure it out. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually just made a post today about the fact that uh, I did chest day today and I'm actually doing a, 
uh, bodybuilding split routine, right? And um, one of the ways that I've found that's beneficial for pressing movements is I focus more on the incline movement than the flat bench for um, benching. And it's totally just a balance. It's yeah. the way that I get the most balance so I don't lose the traction like you're talking about. Because once you do, you're right. You lose that movement altogether. Um, yeah. And I failed today. And it was like, okay, how do I adapt? So instead of worrying about doing it on the barbell, I just went to a machine and I did like a hammer strength machine to mm -hmm. replace that movement. So. I can relate to that for sure. Um, what would you say, because I know I've got a couple of guys who are around your age um, and they're into fitness as well. What would you say to anybody who uh, is interested in getting started in the fitness journey but doesn't know where to start? This is actually a pretty common question for everybody, but the best advice I could give is just get just get started. Do some basic research on nutrition and what you should be eating for maximum uh, just health and maximum. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like um, performance, maybe. Yeah, performance is the word I'm looking for. Thanks, but uh, maximum performance in and out of the gym. Um, and just, uh, you know, get started and go to the gym. Even though if you don't know what you're doing, there's lots of people in there that will help you. Um, and just kind of learn as you go. This whole process is learning as you go because I've learned so much in the last uh, about seven and a half, eight years where I'm able to help other people progress on their journey with their progress but i still most certainly do not know everything that there is to know right so it's all about learning as you go but definitely don't be scared of walking or going into a gym and talking to people or just doing some research or working out at home or whatever however you want to get started it's just all about that starting point yeah, actually getting up and making the decision to just go even if you feel uncomfortable, right? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter if you start on a Monday or a Friday. The point is you've started it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you said you've been on this journey since you were 12. You're now, what, 18, right? Uh, 19. I turned 20 in May. Actually. Okay, 19, 20 in May. So – what you're getting ready the summer I saw on Instagram you're getting ready to chase after your pro card um, for wheelchair bodybuilding so what does that process look like that process looks like actually I do start prep in about I start prep February 1st for that show so what's that gonna look like is my coach and I we set out a specific plan um, any diet retaining to any sort of weight loss, right? You're just going to start with a minimal, with your like minimal amount of calories. And then you're just going to slowly progressively drop them as you get closer, closer to the show and tweak certain things. And once you get closer to the show, like a day out from the show, you'll cut water and all those kind of extra little things that you need to do. But for the most part, because I've, done it so many times like this will be my sixth appearance i've guest posed four times i won my last show in april in Stratford, so this will be my sixth one so you kind of get into a groove of what it's going to be like this one will definitely be a, a little different because there's already for me even though i haven't started yet there's already for me so many emotions going into it because uh, this is everything that i've worked for uh for the last eight years now it'd be nice to get my pro card the first time. Like every, like I'm showing up to win, obviously. So if, in my opinion, if you're not showing up to win, then I'm not, then what's the point of, right? Everybody's going to show up to win. 
some people might show up to place for the experience and the experience is great, but at the end of the day, we're all chasing one goal, right? And there's only one winner. So my ideal uh, thing would be to win this year, but you know, we don't always get what we want, what we want. Life always throws us a curveball. So. Yeah. But I, I would say the important key there, my takeaway from what you said is, uh, we approach no matter who we are and what our goal is, we should always approach it in the mindset of we've got this, we're going to win and we're going to uh, develop our plan and take actions that create that um, process to give it the best shot to win for sure. Exactly. And that can be used with the anything in life, right? So, it's not yeah, just absolutely outside. inside outside of the gym a hundred percent um so i've got a couple more questions for you and because the show's title is no label live um one of the things i say is we're surrounded by labels all the time no matter what uh we just decide what we want to uh, assign to our identity. So could you give me a, a quick story about any time where, where you've felt labeled by someone else and what kind of, like how you decided that wasn't who you really are? Oh geez, I would really have to think for a minute. Um, let's see. You know, when I when I was younger, it always used to be kids used to stare and kind of because they didn't know why I was in a wheelchair, right? And I was still kind of just figuring it all out on my own. And then some people think because you have a specific disability, this is what you're like, right? So, and mm -hmm. then, so from a very young age, I used to have a problem with being the way I am, right? Because... I didn't know what was going on or I actually used to think I was the only one. And then when my dad and I went out, he would always stop people in the mall or stop other disabled people in the mall and have a conversation with them to make me realize that I wasn't the only one. And then once I got older, I just finally said, you know, it, it is what it is. You're in this situation, but you're just like everybody else. You can live a life you can have goals you can get a job you can do everything you want to do and that's how i came to the realization that it's just a chair and helps me get from point a to point b there's nothing going on there's nothing else going on other than that right so yeah that that's awesome um so Bouncing off of that, one of the questions I always ask is, um, if you were to take a like a name tag, but the name tag instead of say, saying "Hello, my name is," it said "Hello, my label is." But this is something that you wear, like a word or a phrase that leaves you feeling empowered. What would be on your label? My label would be, I would really have to understand what that means a little more before I answer the question because I'm still a little confused. So yeah, it's just a word or a phrase that you say to yourself, kind of like an affirmation. So how you affirm uh, what you are creating in the world. I just, constantly say to myself i i'm one of the best wheelchair bodybuilders i'm bray hoffman the the wheelchair bodybuilder a wheelchair bodybuilder that's how i define myself okay awesome i am bray hoffman i am a wheelchair bodybuilder i'm the best i love that's that the, that's the goal yeah right? absolutely um what, uh, where can people connect with you? How can they follow your journey as you prep for what you've got going on? 
So I've got my Instagram is Brayhoff uh, at Brayhoffman72. Then my Facebook is Brayhoffman, and then my fan page is Brayhoffman Canadian Wheelchair Bodybuilding. And uh, we'll make sure and drop all that in the the uh, comments below. So if you were going to say one uh well let me let me go to the last question and then um so what when you hear this phrase what does it mean to you and the phrase is no label defines me it means to me it means you can be whatever you want to be you can accomplish whatever you set out to accomplish and you can do whatever if you believe in um if you 100 percent believe in in yourself and what your ability is to get something done you can do whatever you want and whatever you set your mind to do yeah you you can do whatever you set your mind to i agree with that um before we hop off is there anything else you want to leave with anybody who's watching or listening to the show today? Oh, Jesus. Um, well, I just say what I already said before. If you guys are looking to get started in fitness or any anything uh, that's not related to fitness or bodybuilding, just set your mind to it um, and take the first step and get it done. I'd also like to add if you guys are interested in either watching or showing up to the Toronto Pro Show uh, June 1st and 2nd, come out because the wheelchair division needs the support. Uh, we'd love to have you up there if you're interested. And if not, it's just great to have other people like myself in the audience supporting the wheelchair division. And uh, with that, is there any way for for us who aren't in the area to like do they have a way to watch it online or um i'm not too sure if they broadcast the toronto pro show online i know they'll probably come out with videos after but i don't think they live stream it i don't think the show's big enough okay all right well if it, if we find out that it is definitely uh keep us up on that because we would love to um, for sure be able to watch that for sure and um thanks so much for for joining me today i know uh, a lot of people oh, are my pleasure thank you uh, from today's episode um, and thanks for continuing to push uh the uh the boundaries of what people believe is possible just by the way that you show up and the way that you're taking action towards your dreams. Like you said, um, people are, are coming up to you and, and talking to you uh, about how you are creating possibility for them. So keep showing up the way uh, that you are. And man, I, I know you're putting in a lot of hard work. Anybody that goes to the gym and uh is a competitive bodybuilder uh it's a definite skill and it's a lot of hard work and days when when you probably don't want to go but you keep focused on your your major goal um and mm -hmm. making it happen so i just want to acknowledge you for that thank you and if you guys found any piece of uh knowledge any piece of nugget of wisdom and you think somebody else will find that as well make sure and share this episode make sure and follow bray on his journey and then i will catch you next time